nke wakporo obodo anyi kale wo kokunrin mo ko birin mo ki omo de pe se ki agbalagba mo chigaba de yima rendena sojin kasa na adua akule yi temi e ka bo sori eto wa eto yin eto obirin to dangaja wa e fitan chanta a dauka a matsayin dan aikin cikin gida guru bai ti wede na kizu ka bu ke puru mu fiche ma ma ka nan ke se enti e hausa barko mu da haka kini ayoyodo ile ya ta man se lodo dun yi ro mo enti e you can't beat the rich the finals of the men and women african cup of nations it's always frenetic on days such as this there are no tribes no religion here nigerian warriors are around to represent to show the skills that makes us the best on days like this, the color is one. The color is green. When we get the job done, it is because we have stuck together. When we celebrate, we stand together. Nigerians, united in victory. We are Nigerians. We are one. It is for us to learn the way he has done his things, not to bring some foreign things that are alien to Islam. Commemorating the birth of Prophet Muhammad is Miss Carol. Our uh, God is a God of humility, peace, love, and joy. Looking forward to the birth of Jesus Christ. Presidency says no replacement of service chiefs. Plus, quest for federalism for stability. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on NT Network News. I'm Cyril Stover. Just to say compliments to you, Simak Mavlud. Now, the ancient city of Daura in Katsina State was a beehive as dignitaries from all walks of life converged to witness a colorful derba as part of activities commemorating this year's Mawlud. Awal Haliru reports that the celebration was a reunion of some sorts. Twelfth of review Awal of every year in the Islamic calendar is significant to the people of Dora. It was the day the Emirates celebrate what is described as a Salargani or the colorful host procession and the Emir in the lead as part of activities to mark Eid Mawlud to celebrate the birthday of Prophet Muhammad. Apart from celebrating Eid Maulud, the Daba brings out the rich cultural and historical heritage of the Dora Emirate. This explains the influx of dignitaries to witness the event. The tradition uh, should be preserved. We are happy to, to be uh, part of the celebration. The secretary to the state government, Dr. Mustafa Inwa, who stood in for Governor Amini Bella Masari, urged people to adhere to the teachings of Prophet Muhammad and below abiding. If Muslims in particular, will adhere to the teaching of the prophet. I believe the society will be run for free. In Kisna, Awal Haliru, NTN. And as the Muslim Ummah commemorates Mawlud, the day the prophet of Islam was born, Abdullah Musa Suleja takes a look at its significance to the faithful. Prophet Muhammad was born in Makkah in the year 570 AD, equivalent to 12 of Rabiul Awal before Hijrah the migration of Muslims from Mecca to Medina when the Islamic calendar took effect. His birth brought to an end Jahiliya, the period of ignorance. The Holy Prophet attained his prophethood at the age of 40 when he received the first revelation from Angel Jibril in the cave of Hira who instructed him to read, which stressed the importance of acquiring knowledge. The revelation to him from Allah spanned the period of 23 years is what is called the Quran, the Muslim's guide to the end of time. Muhammad lived an honest, a modest, exemplary, and truthful life, which even the non-Muslim benefited from his lifestyle. He is humble, highly responsible. He sympathizes for his followers. He is merciful. Allah call him Rahman. 
We did not send you to mankind except to serve as a source of mercy. What is the significance of this day to the Muslim Ummah? There is no special worshipping that being a mark that he should do it or observe today. The Prophet did not celebrate his birthday, neither did his companions. While some Muslims do not subscribe to the idea of celebrating, others see nothing wrong in that, pointing out that if a believer can mark his birthday, that of the Prophet of Islam is also worth celebrating. The essence of celebration here now, it is for us to learn the way he has done his things, not to bring some foreign things that are alien to Islam. Like you see some people doing things today in the name of Maulud. It is complete opposite of what Maulud is supposed to teach. That is what you see them doing. What is supposed to be of a Muslim is to see Rasulullah as a role model in your 24 hours life, in your daily life, your weekly life, your yearly life, nothing of your religion passes except through his endorsement. Your life should be the life of uh, a tradition of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Muhammad died on the 12th of Rabiul Awal at the age of 63, 1448 years ago. Abdullahi Musa Sleja, NTA News. The Life Center branch of the Redeemed Christian Church of God has held its maiden Christmas carol service. Dennis Adegmuluri reports that an array of musical talents was on hand to give renditions of traditional carols with Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibaju in attendance. It was a night of tribute to Jesus Christ the King with dramatizations of his birth, well choreographed performances of the old and new Christmas carols and recitations of Bible passages. Senior pastor of the Life Center, Odu Emashialu, and members of the church explain the importance of Christmas carol. Our God is a God of humility, peace, love, and joy. And uh, all this is unconditional with him. So I want to encourage everyone to uh, take in all, imbibe all these virtues. At the All Christian Fellowship Mission was also an array of performances to set the tone for the Christmas carol night service. Reverend William Okoye spoke on the true essence of Christmas. So, uh, during this time of celebration, I mean, all the days of our life, we have to commit ourselves to be agents of change, agents of transformation, God's extended hands to help people who are poor, downtrodden. He called on Nigerians to be their brother's keeper, irrespective of ethnic or religious backgrounds, and to pray continually for the peace and stability of the country. In Abuja, Dennis at Digumlui, NTA News. And on the North, Vice President Yemi Oshibaju has urged Christians in the country to live in love with each other and with non Christians as they celebrate Jesus Christ. It was at the service of nine lessons and Christmas carol in Abuja. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday has details. Represented by the Senior Special Assistant to the Vice President on Media and Publicity, Laulu Akande, the Vice President reminded Christians and Nigerians of the significance of the birth of Jesus Christ to the world, which is a demonstration of God's love to mankind, as encapsulated in the nine lessons. Jesus is love. We should have love for ourselves and love for each other. Even as Jesus said, we should love our enemies. Archbishop of Catholic Diocese of Abuja, John Cardinal Onaikon, dwelled more on national issues. It is, of course, the duty of government to make and endorse laws, enforce laws. But the endemic corruption in our land may be calling for some amount of negotiation towards repentance, refund, and possibly amnesty. We will
There was candlelight symbolizing to lighting up all nooks and crannies of the country. And its light will shine in our land Amen. until all the world will see it. The nine lessons and Christmas carols organized by the Nigerian Television Authority, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria and Voice of Nigeria was attended by prominent Nigerians with members of other faith attending for the first time to encourage religious tolerance in the country. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. And 27 people have been confirmed dead at the collapse of the uncompleted Rainers Bible Church building in Uyu, Akwaibom State. Susan Asukwa has an update. After the collapse of the Rainers Bible Church building, there has been apprehension on the casualty figures and persons involved. NCA News investigation revealed that contrary to speculations that some members of Akwaibon State Executive Council members were among the dead, the State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Dominic Ukpong, who was on call at the Ibom Specialist Hospital, where over 47 injured persons were hospitalized, dispelled the rumor. None of our commissioners has passed on. Uh, we have some of them who were injured, but they are stable. They are receiving the proper treatment. I've actually discharged two this morning. On the actual figure of those who lost their lives, the health commissioner said although the death toll is above 20, he cannot rule out any other possible death since some are in critical health condition. It is not up to 100, it is not up to 50, it is not up to 30. We have several people in critical condition, several people on life support. We have doctors who have come from around the country helping. Luckily we have the state of the art equipment. It is not true that we had up to 200 patients that were brought in because we've seen stories uh, were being carried that uh, we said that we had up to 200 bodies. No, we only received 21 bodies yesterday and that, as of today as I speak we have only 24 in our mock. At the University of York Teaching Hospital, the mock was a beehive of activities as the attendants were battling to handle the over 20 corpses from decomposing. The state governor in a state broadcast appealed for calm and prayer for the victims and their families. We therefore set up a high-powered panel of inquiry to ascertain the immediate and remote causes leading to the collapse of the building with a view to forestalling the recurrence of such incidents and bring to book persons found to have compromised professional standards in the construction of the building. In Uyo, Susan Asukwa, NTA News. Meanwhile, the president has conveyed to the governor and people of Akwaibom State the deep sorrow of his family, the government, and the entire people of Nigeria over the debts and injuries recorded following the collapse of the Rainers Bible Church in Uyo in praying for the repose of the souls of the dead and the quick recovery of the injured, President Buhari implored the people of the state, especially those in the catchment area of the incident, to rally around the victims of the tragedy to help ease their sorrow and pain. A statement by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Garba Shehu, said the President commended the government of the state for the handling of the situation so far. President Buhari also congratulated the governor of Akwaibom State, Udom Emmanuel, and his family on their lucky escape from the tragedy. In a related development, the Speaker House of Representatives, Yakubu Dogara, has commiserated with all those affected by the church building collapse in Uyo. In a statement by his spokesman, Turaiki Hassan, the Speaker called for a thorough and comprehensive investigation into the immediate and remote causes of the collapse of the church building. While praying for the repose of the souls and quick recovery of the injured, Dogara commended Governor Udom Emmanuel for staying back to personally supervise the rescue operation. In other news, the presidency has refuted the reported replacements of the Chief of Defense Staff, General Gabriel Olonishaki, and the Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Ibokete Ibas. A statement by the Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adeshino, says the information is unsubstantiated. It states that though General Olonishaki is due to retire from the Army next week, having satisfied 
the official number of years in service. He is yet to be replaced, and the Chief of Naval Staff has a short while more. The presidency, however, cautioned some sections of the media that would rather speculate to double-check information before disseminating it, as this is not the way to go for national cohesion and development. Also, the Minister of Defense, Mansur Ang Ali, says there is no communication between his office and the service chiefs directing any one of them to hand over and proceed on retirement. This followed an online publication claiming that he had sent letters to the Chief of Defense Staff, General Olonishaki, and Chief of the Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Ibokete Ibas, directing them to comply before Friday the 16th of December. A statement by the Public Relations Officer to the Minister, Colonel Tukurguzau, said the appointment and replacement of service chiefs is a prerogative of the President and Commander-in-Chief. It urged the media to endeavor to always balance stories from the right sources to avoid mischief. Speaker Yakubu Dogara has urged Nigerians to support the families of dead soldiers in whatever capacity they can as a mark of appreciation for their sacrifices. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Sunko reports. Shortly after being decorated with the Nigerian Armed Forces Remembrance Emblem, Speaker Yakubu Dogara noted that showing support to the families of dead soldiers is the best way to motivate officers and men of the Nigerian Army. He observed that it is the huge sacrifices made by the Nigerian military that has kept Nigeria intact as a nation. It's the duty of all of us in Nigeria, the representatives of the people, um, the entrepreneurs, those in government, the executive government, the branch of the government, those in the judiciary, um, as well as the common man, for all of us to answer this rallying call to do to ensure that everyone who has suffered, everyone who has sacrificed for this country, including paying the street price, at least um, it's honored, doing whatever we can do in uh, fulfillment of our civic responsibilities to ensure that at least the people they left behind um, have a better life. The Nigerian Legion says one of the major challenges facing the group is the welfare of widows and children of dead soldiers scattered across the country. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. The Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, has reiterated his commitment to place more emphasis on capacity building and an improved welfare for Air Force personnel for effective discharge of their duties. This was at his operational visit to the headquarters 53 Nigerian Air Force Detachment, Ibado. Olajide Bello has details. The Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, made an on the sport assessment of facilities at the headquarters 53 Nigerian Air Force Detachment, from where he proceeded to the government house, where he was received by the Oyo State Governor, Abiola Ajimobi. He lauded the state government for its support towards the smooth operations of the Nigerian Air Force Detachment, reiterating their resolve to live up to its mandate in the state, commending the Nigerian Air Force and other armed forces for its gallantry at restoring peace in the Northeast, Governor Abiola Jumabi said the state will continue to partner with security agencies to entrench peace for sustainable growth and development. I believe that any other development is premised on having security of lives and property. Air Marshal Sadiq Aubaka also visited the headquarters Air Force Comprehensive School on an inspection tour. We have identified those challenges and I promised them that we are going to uh, address these challenges so that we can have a better school for our personnel. The visit is the first since the Chief of Air Staff assumed office. From Ibado, Olajide, Bello, NTA News. A book, Nigerian Federalism, Continuing Quest for Stability and Nation Building, has been formally presented to the public. 
former Vice President Atiku Abubakar recommended a restructuring of the, current, of the country's current status to address what he called lopsidedness in the system. Abdullah Higarpa Brendan Kudu has details. The book is a three-year research work of African Policy Research Institute in partnership with other policy formulators like the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, National Institute for International Affairs, to serve as a policy direction document. It is a review of Nigeria's journey in federalism from 1914 to date. Leading other speakers, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar believes that Nigeria's current federal system should be open for restructuring. He pointed out issues of over-dependence on the center, taxation, manipulation of the third tiers, and some of the absurdities. The current structure may be working for some elites, but it has clearly not worked well for any section of this country and the country as a whole. We should take deliberate steps to change this structure to serve us better. Contributors recommended the book to both elected and appointed leaders for its depth in matters of federal structure, jurisprudence, and intergovernmental relations. That it has more to do with the operators of the Constitution than it has with the inadequacy of the contents of, of our Constitution. How can the states in the Southwest be bipartisan in joining resources to build railways and resolve you know, transportation issues? Senate President Bukola Saraiki was represented at the event. Abdullahi Gerba Burunokudu, NTA News. Minister of Information and Culture Lai Mohammed has congratulated Channels Television on its 21st anniversary and urged the station to keep up the good work. It was at a gala night in Lagos. Anthony Fawson reports. Minister noted with delight that channels at 21 deserve some patting on the back and more words of encouragement having weathered the storm to come this far. He used the opportunity to re-echo the quantum of jobs that will be created from television production when television digitization is completed next year. Digitization will make it possible to have at least 180 state channels, certain regional channels, and at least 10 national channels, catering for local music, news, Field, children programming, and sports. The need for content to fill these stations will translate to huge number of jobs. Chairman of Channels Television, John Momo, in his remark, assured that despite the uncertainty in the industry, through determination, Channels has leveraged on professionalism and marketing to get to where it is today. In Lagos, Anthony Forson, NTA News. And still in Lagos, Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has commended Academy Press for holding its own in the printing, packaging, and publishing sector, saying its capacity to remain in contention in the West African subregion is tailored towards the administration's policy thrust of growing the economy. Here again is Anthony Fawson. Academy Press in Lagos started operation in 1966 with the primary responsibility of providing local alternative for printing educational jobs. 51 years gone by, the Academy Press has not only remained a frontline printing press, but has also moved with the changing trends in the industry, having acquired modern technology. Moved by this feat, the minister who commissioned two sets of newly acquired equipment to enhance their security printing capacity was full of praise to the management. We must protect them against dumping. Uh, it's, today, why is it cheaper to go to Dubai and print? Simply because when you print from Dubai and bring it here, you pay no duty. Whereas the raw material that they need to print here are either not available, and when they imported, they pay very high tariff. So we must balance this. Narrating the journey so far and the commitment that has brought the company this far, its board chairman and the managing director spoke on their vision. As we showcase our present facilities to you today, it is going to be a new beginning for us to ensure that we continue to service the need and the growth of the industry. The Academy Press, apart from Nigeria, 
has an outlet in Ghana with clients that stretch beyond Nigeria. In Lagos, Anthony Forson, MTA News. Swedish investors in the housing sector say they are set to invest in Nigeria following government's credible program for affordable housing for citizens. It was at a forum in the office of the head of the civil service of the Federation. Adibala Brooklyn Sunday reports. From all ministries, departments and agencies, these civil servants converged on the office of the head of the civil service of the Federation in pursuit of their homes. With the support of President Muhammadu Buhari, the leadership of the civil service has been engaging housing developers within and outside the country towards providing affordable housing for Nigerians. So we have a very good comprehension on governments that are willing to work together. We're very strong in support of Nigeria, so our confidence is without question. It will be affordable. Uh, we will fit into the FISH program, and the houses that we are building, we're building of the highest quality. The FISH program of the federal government is opened to all civil servants as they are expected to show interest and the federal government through the Federal Mortgage Bank and the Federal Government Staff Housing Loans Board will assist them in acquiring the property. That's to tell you that the president and the entire administration is very serious in delivering affordable housing to the people. So civil servants should come in, take advantage of it. There are houses. We appreciate the president for this initiative and uh, we pray that God will continue to strengthen him. To further strengthen the sector, President Muhammadu Buhari approved a 13 billion naira mortgage refinancing loan scheme for civil servants alone. Should signal to investors at home and abroad the significant opportunities in the Nigerian housing sector. The affordable housing program initiator says is to motivate the workers and increase their level of productivity. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. And you can watch this broadcast live online via the NT mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. And up ahead, INEC releases more results from Rivers rerun elections. The details when we return. From what we have seen, we have the capacity which we can rapidly develop or feed ourselves. If we don't import rice, we stop importing corn and other grains. Nigeria will have plenty of money to invest into developing industries, especially manufacturing, textiles and so on, and develop iron and steel and complement the infrastructure development. So really, the opportunities are virtually limitless, and we are very, very aware of this, and we are prepared to explore it to the fullest. presentation in the next minute and eh? there will be trouble how are we supposed to work with data speeds like this it's the internet experience that will change everything again brought to you by Nigeria's widest data coverage network it's time for real 4g LTE Join Nigeria's largest 4G network. Text 4G to 131 now. Your presentation, sir. NTN 4G LTE. In every sphere of life, it's life like never before. Hi guys, look how my baby Jamil has grown. And as they grow, there's a worry we all share, skin rash. Some use lotions or petroleum jelly, but I found what works for Jamil is Nigerian Pampers. It has built-in lotion to help protect his delicate skin and keep him dry. See you in the morning, Jam Jam. 
Good morning, Happy Jam Jam. Dry and soft and no sign of a rash. Join many other moms and try Nigerian Pampers with lotion. Let's beat the rash. Hello? Welcome to the M6 Challenge. Using your new Kiomi M6. Carry out everything on that list. Starting now. for a 5,000 milliamp battery that lets you go on for two days on a single charge. Juni M6, always in power. to get Jobber Man, Airtel One Touch, and many more without data charges. Only on Airtel. The City Committee on Trade and Investment invites all relevant stakeholders and the general public to a two-day public hearing on the following. A bill for an act to repeal the Consumer Protection Act. A bill for an act to introduce measures aimed against the trade in counterfeit goods. A bill for an act to repeal the Nigeria Export Processing Zone Authority Act. Date, Tuesday, 13th to Wednesday, 14th December, 2016. Venue, Conference Room, 231, Second Floor, Senate New Building, National Assembly Complex, Abuja. Time, 10 a.m. prompt. Special Guest of Honor, His Excellency, the Senate President. President, guest of honor, the Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Senator Fatima O. Rajirasaki, Chairman, announcer. It's truck month at Ford and we've got a Ranger just for you, Vincent. Here's the Workhorse 2.5 petrol single cab with free Ford Protect, a four-year 120,000 kilometer service plan. Or the 2.5 petrol based double cab with 800 millimeter water wading capability. Available in manual transmission and with free Ford Protect. So, while stocks last, visit Costaris Motors today. Because, wait for it, thanks Vincent. We've got a tough Ford Ranger just for you. network news from Abuja. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has released more results of the River State National Assembly rerun elections. George Thompson Sekibo of People's Democratic Party emerged winner of River's East Senatorial District election. He scored 93,098 votes, while Andrew Uchendu of the All Progressives Congress, APC, scored 34,193 votes. Also in the Rivers West Senatorial District, Oshinaka Idiozu of PDP won the election. He pulled 107,166 votes, while Otimaba Dan Amakri of APC scored 46,898 votes. With this, INEC has released the results of the three senatorial districts conducted in Rivers State. 
Chairman, Senate Committee on Power, Steel, Development and Metallurgy, Einaya Abaribe, has called on electricity distribution companies to patronize indigenous manufacturers of energy meters. He stated this during an oversight visit to power and steel projects in Kaduna. National Assembly correspondent Ifai Izumba reports. Senator Abaribe, who emphasized that electricity distribution companies must key into ongoing efforts to turn around the nation's industrial sector, said the current widespread complaint about metering will be drastically reduced, fastening meter deployment processes and in turn grow economy. We are looking at better services, better efficiency from you, more technology, higher distribution of uh, meters and so forth, and yet what you are remitting back is less. Engineer Bello Musa of Kaduna Electrics disclosed that they have procured 50,000 meters and deployment is currently ongoing. We have a capacity of about 700 megawatts that we are installed capacity. The committee visited Kaduna State Deputy Governor who urged them to assist in meeting their target of providing the power needed to drive their industry. Uh, particularly the textile industries that have become comatose, largely because of the absence of adequate power to drive them. The committee also visited Kaduna Forum office, injection substation, and Mando transmission station. So, when it needs, that has been awarded, and we have a timeline of between now and December Chairman expressed satisfaction with the work done so far by contractors at Mando Station. In Kaduna, Ifani Izumba, NT News. Representatives of 16 African countries are in Abuja deliberating on how to prevent the infiltration of hazardous chemicals into the continent. Mia Ugidi was at the opening session of the program and now reports. To do that, whatever decision that is arrived at here will be understood by us, and from that point, we'll carry it forward into a lawmaking process. After four days of deliberations, these experts are expected to come up with a resolutions for legal backing, which will be binding in all ECOWAS member states. Mie Ogidi, NT News. Nigeria Union of Pensioners has appealed to President Muhammad Buhari to investigate all those who embezzled pension funds and to use the recovered funds to offset pension arrears so as to relieve pensioners of their plight. The appeal was made at the 15th National Pensioners Day in Abuja. Labor correspondent Emmanuel Ayimiro reports. <laughs> The occasion was a season of prayers to God for an improvement in Nigeria's pray, economy, we'll particularly Amen. when the nation is striving to overcome economic recession. The Union President, Dr. Ebel Afulayun, said pensioners are now the worst hit as so many of them at the state levels are left with nothing because the bailout funds from the federal government do not get to them as state governors claim the bailout is for salaries. Local government pensioners, primary school pensioners, there are many of them who have not been paid a, a couple in the last two to three years. So I'm sad. I'm depressed. Our children will not witness this kind of situation. Amen. Our grandchildren will not witness this kind of situation. Amen. There are thousands of Jenian pensioners who have not been able to access their money, their monthly pension since the introduction of the e-payment since 2009 to date. The union also appealed to the federal, state and local governments to step up efforts in the preparation and payment of December pension before Christmas so as to put smiles on their faces and that of their families in Abuja. Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTA News. The cosmopolitan nature of military personnel in their formations serves as catalysts for peace, security, and unity in the country. This was in a message by the governor of Nasara State, Umaru Tonko Al Makura, to the Nigerian Army Social Activities Day of 177 Guards Battalion, Kefi. Mohammed Sani Awalu reports. 
Represented by Secretary to State Government, Umaru Suleiman Azaz, Governor Umaru al makura says military are vital to peace and security in the country. And it's so good that they find a time whereby all of them, you know, gather together, you know, and uh, have recreation. The Commandant Brigade of Guides, Brigadier General Musa Yusuf, says the annual events affords the officers and men opportunity to have fun and shed their uniform for rich traditional attires and still preserve the Nigerian army ethics and tradition. Uh, from the cultural groups that have displayed so far, that is to show you that the Bara community are very happy uh, to see to the successful ending of the calendar year 2016. It is an opportunity to also showcase the rich cultural heritage of our dear country, Nigeria. Some traditional rulers at the events call for more rapport between the military and citizens. Early events in, in, uh, improve unity, love among the civilian and the military. It is, it is an event worthy of coming and worthy of celebration. Highlights of the event were inspection of dishes of various companies, cultural dance, their debutry, talk of war, and presentation of awards to excel personnel. From Kefi, Muhammad Sainawali, NTA News. In time now to join Abdullahi in our Lagos studios for more on network news. Hello, Abdullahi. Hello, Sri. Good evening, and thanks for joining us in Lagos. The Bank of Industry is committed to playing a key role in federal government's import substitution and export generation policies with a view to diversifying the economy for national development. Acting Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of the bank, Wahido Lagunju, stated this at the official commissioning of a new SIM cards manufacturing company, Secure ID, supported by the Bank of Industry in Lagos. Musa Toliad has details. The Acting Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Bank of Industry, Wahid Lagunju, said the potential development impact on job creation and economic development informed the Bank of Industry supports the SIM cards manufacturing company, Secure ID. He added that the potential of the company to reposition the telecom and financial sectors through the production of highly secured smart cards is in line with the mandate of BOI to support the non-oil sectors to thrive. It means that we can also export SIM cards to those African countries and we can generate foreign exchange, create more jobs and then of course more company tax by the company itself. The Bank of Industry have played the role of a true development bank. Um, not only in providing finance, but in providing support. Having inaugurated the company, the Minister of Communication, Adeba Ishitu, said telecom companies and financial institutions now have no justification to import SIM card and credit cards into the country. I would therefore, in the area of communication cards, SIM cards and all of that, discourage importation or spending Nigerians money you know, overseas on some of these things since we now have enough capacity to produce. Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment commended the Bank of Industry for promoting the local content initiative of the federal government. And I can assure you that we're going to be backing the likes of POI to have more and more of the resources they need. The Bank of Industry says it will continue to support initiatives geared towards inspiring national development in every sector of the economy in the country. In Lagos, Musa Tolia, NTA News. The federal government is set to revitalize alien industries in the country through its various intervention programs. Minister of State Trade and Investment Aisha Abubakar met this known in Kano while inspecting some of the Bank of Industries intervention project in the state. The manufacturing sector has for many years been contributing immensely to the economic development of the country, particularly in areas of employment opportunities. However, inconsistent policies, lack of electricity, non-availability of raw materials, smuggling and counterfeiting of the finished products, and most recently the high rate of foreign exchange, among other things, are what stakeholders see as the bane of these industries. These and many other reasons inform the federal government's decision through the Bank of Industries to come up with a policy that will provide succor to the collapsing industries, particularly in the textile sector. This is through intervention. Tagged cotton, textile, and garments, CTG, where over 200 billion naira was disbursed nationwide. Minister of State Trade and Investments visit to Kano State 
is to assess the utilization of the funds by the benefiting operators, discuss challenges and prospects. We're also trying to address the issue of patronage. And the issue of patronage, I'm sure that by next year we will see more results. And we are also asking Mr. President to launch a big campaign on the Made in Nigeria and to insist that um, certain agencies patronize what we can produce locally. For modern equipment that we invested in for most of the Tesla company uh, was applauded. The minister who declared the inability of some of the textile industries for not producing optimally due to their challenges, where she pledged government's intervention. She also expresses happiness with the production capacity of some of the operators. During the two-day working visit to Kano, Hajia Aisha Abubakar visited some tanneries and plastic industries. The visit was rounded up with a stakeholders forum organized by Kano business community. In Kano, Mansur Ali Hassan, NTA News. You're still watching NTA Network News. We take a break now to bring you some messages. The news continues shortly. This must be one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. But there's something else it gives us. When we see such beauty, we want to share it with those we love. That's what LG wants you to see. Just what we see now through our technology. LG OLED TV. Household of God International Ministries presents Grace 2016. Featuring the special Caris Award recipient, Mrs. Efunjoke Koka. Special guest of honor, His Excellency, Mr. Akiumi Ambodi. Chairman, Brigadier General Mobolaji Johnson. Retired. And your host, Reverend Chris Okotie. Date, Sunday, December 18, 2016. Time, 5.30 p.m. Venue, the Household of God Church of Kudirata Biola Way, Oregon, Ikeja, Lagos. Other recipients include Strong Tower Mission, Pacheli School for the Blind and Partially Sighted, Sunshine Foundation, and Spinal Cord Injuries Association of Nigeria. Grace 2016, be there. In Nigeria, there is one sound we need to silence. <laughs> So let's silence to take before it starts. With Oral B All Round Protection, its advanced technology helps prevent both tooth holes and gum problems that can lead to tooth loss. It strengthens your teeth, giving them all round protection. Because the only sound we really want to hear is that of our future. For healthier, stronger teeth in one week. Hello? Welcome to the M6 Challenge. Using your new GOD M6, carry out everything on that list. Starting now. Get to the door. Congratulations, you have passed the test. Gioni M6 with a 5,000 milliamp battery that lets you go on for two days on a single charge. Gioni M6, always in power. Success. I always wanted to make something of myself. Even when I was a child, with So Clean, my mother made sure that my clothes were clean and bright. With a 30% concentrated formula, washing is faster, brighter, and cleaner. Like millions of families, mine also trusts So Clean with my clothes and with my career. Because when all eyes are on you, you have to look the part. So clean. It's your time to shine. So clean. Now with a new look and stain magnet technology for even better stain removal. When you chew the long-lasting flavor of new Trident, you'll feel refreshed and able to think on your feet. Trident. Fresh mouth. Fresh perspective. Life, 
there are many distractions. But the future is always created by those who can focus on the goal. Techno Phantom 6 with dual back camera and adjustable focusing technology. Never say it, show it. My daughter, you are a star. May you be the secret ingredient that makes a happy home. Maggie Star, made from natural soybeans and other carefully selected ingredients, prepared in a way only Maggie knows. That's why for generations, Maggie Star has been the secret that brings out the rich taste and aroma in local soups. With Maggie, every woman is a star. Nestle, good food, good life. We're back in Abuja with the rest of the news. Nigeria's forex reserves increase as global oil price rallies. Details of this and more on business news with Joy Uzo. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on the business news. Financial analysts have said that the nation's foreign exchange reserves with increase by 0.80% to $24.97 billion was due to rallying global crude oil prices. OPEC's reference basket price increase week on week by 1.54% to $50.04 a barrel, while Brent's crude oil price rose by 0.52% to $53.98 a barrel. The recent positive movement in global oil prices followed recent agreement by the Organization for Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, to implement a new production target of 32.5 million barrels per day in order to speed up the ongoing reduction of excess stockpiles. ECOWAS trade policies, when properly implemented, will reduce Nigeria's capital flights, create more jobs as well as boost agricultural activities. These were the views of traders in search of sustainable business growth in Nigeria. They suggest a review of the complex security checks along country borders. President, National Association of Nigerian Traders, Ken Okoha, made the position to NTA Business News. There is an increase in productivity, especially in terms of agriculture this year. There are other commodities that are exportable that we can use, we can, you know, utilize to cushion the effects of the economic the recession. The target of the federal government on self-sufficiency in rice production by 2017 seems to be coming to fruition as Fadama 3 project has declared that it is in the process of cultivating about 30,000 hectares of rice land in dry season farming plan. According to the National Coordinator, Tayo Adewumi, Fadama farmers, as at November, have been able to cultivate 16,852 hectares. It disclosed the World Bank through the project has also committed $50 million intervention fund to develop agricultural activities in the Northeast. And as it's on business news, the bulletin continues shortly. Thank you, Joy. We take another break for more messages. Human rights violation and awareness, the way forward, is the focus on NTA Tuesday Live this week as experts examine best practices for the protection of human dignity. NTA Tuesday Live, educative, informative, and incisive. Don't be told. Join us. Today, Ariel will show you how to save more in these tough times. Why this powder? It's pretty good and money's tight. But Ariel gives better cleaning with less powder. Impossible. Come with me. Spaghetti sauce, chocolate drink. For these tough stains, I'll need one, two. And just one handful of Ariel. New Ariel gives better stain removal with less powder. That's real savings. Ariel removes tough stains better in one wash. The production, distribution, and sale of counterfeit and fake drugs is a corrupt practice and a crime against humanity. This has informed several measures and strategies to combat fake drugs, including introduction of anti-counterfeiting cutting-edge technologies to detect fake drugs on the spot. These technologies are being deployed to all the states across the Federation, as well as the internally displaced peoples. 